Good evening and welcome to Wandering Angel Studio. This is Carrie. Hi everybody. Um, tonight I have a special little project for you that we're going to be doing. I have a, a version of the larger one here to kind of give you an idea of how you can tie it up. But tonight we're going to be making these adorable little pockets. I've used Velcro on the smaller ones. And looky there. Ta-da! They open up. These are made with envelopes and I'm using Tim Holtz paper. Okay, so this is what we're gonna make this evening. Now, um, like I said, the reason why I have the bigger one out here is, is to show you that I just tied it up. So if you don't have the Velcro, then you can, then you can tie these up um, however you choose. I just use tw ordinary twine, but same principle. There's, this one has four, the larger one has four envelopes. But for the smaller ones, we're only going to have three. So there you go. So let's get started. Um, I'm using Tim Holtz paper from his uh, Ideology Volume 1 Backdrops. Okay. So I've got a couple of pieces here. I think, I think I'm going to use this one. Okay, so we'll put this other one aside and let me get my paper trimmer together. Here we go. Okay. Get the piece out from underneath. And I'm going to cut this paper four and a half inches wide by seven and three quarter inches long. So that's four and a half inches wide by seven and three quarter inches long. Can you use directional paper? Yes, you can. Um, you may have to finagle it a little bit, but you'll, you know, once you work with it, and I'll show you when I when I go to score this, exactly what I, um, what I do with it. I can use this other side too, but I like this one a lot. Okay, so again, the measurements are four and a half, wide by seven and three quarters long. Now we're also going to use these envelopes and these envelopes are a little over four inches wide. They're like four, not quite four and a quarter by like two and three quarters. I got these from Amazon. Um, you don't have to get them there if you don't want to, but if you do want to use the same size envelopes that I used for this, um, I'll put a link in the description down below so you'll be able to order the exact same ones. Um, before I get started, I'm also using 3 8 inch hook and loop tape. Um, here's the hook and here's the loop. And I also got that off of Amazon. And again, I'll put that link in the description so that if you decide you want to order the same products, you can. Um, Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do after we've cut our paper is we're going to uh, close these envelopes off. We wanna seal these, okay? So I'm gonna use my handy dandy tape gun and I'm gonna tape down both sides and seal them shut, okay? Same thing to the second one. There are three envelopes that are gonna go in the little wallet we're making. Okay, these are craft envelopes. I just love the size. Um, and I'll show you why in just a second. Okay, and we have all three of our envelopes sealed. The reason why I like the size is because of this book. Now, take a good look because I'm gonna show you how to make this book, not in this video, but in a video soon to be released, hopefully in the next couple of three days, all right? And the great thing about the book is, it's, it's a paper bag, mini journal, but I wanted to be able to show you how to make ephemera to go in the journal, because it's not just enough to know how to make ephemera, and it's not just enough to know how to make a mini album, or in this case, a mini junk journal, it helps if you know what to do with the journal. And as you'll see, where did I, here they are, okay. I'm trying to figure out where I put them. As you'll see, here's a little flap for the end of the bag, 
Okay, that's that's the end of the, and these are regular size lunch bags. Look at that. Fits perfectly. Isn't that cute? Okay, or you can turn it around and open it on the inside. It's, it's great, the little envelopes, these little wallets are great for storing ephemera, but I like the fact that this particular size fits in my little junk journal. So a lot of the videos that I'll be making going forward are gonna be things that are gonna go in this junk journal. So be on the lookout for those. That means like and subscribe. Okay, enough about that. Alrighty, um, we have our envelopes. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna move my trimmer back in here and hopefully you can see this on camera. And I'm gonna trim these just at the edge. Now, don't sweat the small stuff, folks. Don't worry too much about how much you take off. I'm just nipping the very edge of them off here. The idea is to open the envelope up. That's why we sealed it shut to begin with, so it becomes a perfect envelope, okay? Let me do the other two real quick. Love this trimmer. It's so awesome. Okay, and last but not least, you're gonna be amazed at how quick this goes and how, how easy it is. Um, you'll probably end up doing the same thing I, I did, which was I just couldn't stop making them and I'm still making them because they're just so much fun to make. Okay. Let's get that out of the way because we no longer need that. going to bring in my score pal here as we've got our envelopes ready and put off to the side. Now we're going to score our paper. Keep in mind, um, because this is directional paper, keep in mind what you want up and what you want down. So for instance, if I fold it this way, obviously it's going to be upside down. So I want to put my paper this way so that when I fold it, let's see. I had that, I had this right a while ago. There we go, okay. So I wanna score this on the long end and, and you'll see why in just a minute. I'll, every, it will all become clear, I promise you. Okay, so we're gonna score it at three inches and we're gonna score at six inches. That's all the scoring we need to do. I'm all about rounded corners, so before I even fold it, I'm going to round the corners. And it's if you're going to do it, it's really easier to do it now. Okay. All right, so this is the front. Now, see what I did there? This is how you just, just be patient with the directional paper and pay attention you're gonna want whichever piece you want folded up in the front to face the left side of your of your scoreboard. Okay, so I'm gonna crease these real quick. And because of the way I creased it, guess what? <gasps> That's right side up too, hello. So you can use directional paper with this. You just have to pay attention to how you're laying it down. Okay, now before we glue everything together, the envelopes, insert those, glue those, I like to ink things up a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my, let's see, I was gonna use my walnut stain. I'm gonna use my vintage photo. As you can see, it's much loved. <laughs> so if you're gonna ink the inside, now is the time to do it. I like to ink it because when I open it up to put something in it, I know that it looks a little bit more distressed. Now I got a little bit of ink there. Am I worried about it? Nope, because you know, you guys know me. If you've been following me, me and perfection, we don't get along. I used to be one of those folks, not anymore. It's good enough. I'm good enough, you're good enough. Never forget it. Okay, that's my philosophy lesson for the day. Alrighty. I gotta tell you guys, while I'm inking this up, um, I live near a jet base, and I've got this video that I wanted to shoot, and the video for the book that I showed you earlier, 
and I've been trying to shoot them for four days. <laughs> and because I live near a jet base, it's not always quiet. So um, some days it's harder to shoot than others. In the case of the book video, I tried four times and then finally quit. So I'm gonna try again this weekend. Uh, hopefully I'll get it done then. Small price to pay for having jets in the sky. Um, our great men and women are willing to fly those planes and serve our country, so not complaining about anything but the noise. <laughs> Actually, I knew when I moved here that um, that I'd be near a jet base. I grew up near a jet base, so it, it only bothers me when I'm trying to film. Anyway, we're going to finish. Just a little side story there. Okay, we're finishing inking this up. And again, I'm just being real quick with this for the sake of camera time here. Hoping I'm getting this on film. Yeah, okay. I hope I'm not out of frame there. Okay, now let's deal with our envelopes. What I like to do is I like to put the envelopes together first and then um, I'll ink those as well. So, start with the back one. And you see where we've glued it together, where that point of the envelope is? Okay, that's the middle. So I'm gonna put two, um, two things of glue with my tape gun, two, two rows of tape, if you will, to that. And then I'm gonna stand it up. Um, and the reason why I stand it up, I'll lay it down so you guys can see it, but it actually makes it easier to match up the envelopes and you can make sure that they're um, even on all sides like this one's not. So I might have cut that a little bit crooked. Does it matter in the end? Maybe not, but I like it straight. Okay, so again, I'm gonna put two rows of, of tape glue right there. I'm gonna stand it up. Make sure I got it right side up so the hole I cut is on the right side. That would be smart, wouldn't it? Okay, now, if you want to ink these, now is the time to do it because um, once you get them in the envelope, it's really, or in the little wallet, it's hard to ink them. So what I usually do is I ink them on three sides, the top, See, I'm just running the ink right along the top and then on this edge, on this back edge, on the side, and along that edge. And you won't see a lot of this, but it just kind of, I don't know, kind of makes them look nice. It just kind of makes them look interesting. I like it. I like it. Okay. That's done. Now... How hard is it to put these things together? Not hard at all. We're going to put our tape on there. And it's kind of hard to see. Let me ink it so it'll be easier for you to see. You're not gonna see this in the end, but it'll be easier for you to see on camera. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna place the envelopes uh, just a little bit above that crease you see where that crease is and i'm gonna eyeball it nothing measured here nothing at all lay that down okay then i'm going to guesstimate the middle put a couple of rolls of uh, tape glue on there and presto ta-da we have a wallet how easy was that so much fun so quick now I'll put my loop tape on there really quick. Let's make sure it closes nice and neat. Yep. Sometimes they'll pucker a little bit, like this one I showed you earlier um, that was in the stack. It puckered a little bit, and I just, um, all I did because it puckered is I took my bone folder and ran it across and creased it a little bit, and it laid right down. So you may, it may get a little puffy on you, but you can fix that. Okay, easy way to put on the loop tape, because these things are little. 
what I usually do, and like I said, I'll leave the link to this in the envelopes in the description. As I get the loop in first, it's it's got a real strong glue on it. And then I grab a piece of the I, I grab the opposite piece, hook and loop. So I grab the loop piece first and then the hook piece, okay? And then I look at my envelope and that looks about centered and pow, there they go. To pry my finger up off of it. It's, str it's strong tape. Then just close it and press down really nice and tight and voila, there you go. So we are done, 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 done. How easy was that? Now, if you want to, you can do what I do, which is I like to ink this edge here, cross the top, ink the back. That's the only place where the design is upside down is on the back of the envelope, but um, that's what comes with using directional paper. The important part is the front um, and the top both have uh, the pattern going in the right direction. So, there you go. I'll bring the other ones in for you to look at. Um, the big one can be made the same way, just so you know. It can be scaled up or down, depending on the size envelopes. These are regular letter size envelopes that I happen to have left over. You can put more envelopes in there. Um, there's four in this one, and I didn't add anything extra in terms of extra measurements for the bulk. I just made it a little bit larger. Um, a good rule of measurement for this is if, for example, uh, you, you're trying to decide how, how big to make it and your envelopes are of a different size, you'll notice here that the top of the envelope after it's trim comes to the top of this piece here, the top of the front. So that's a good measurement. If your envelopes are safe, I think these are four and a half by fives. Uh, they are more or less, okay. So if your envelopes are say four and a half inches tall, then make this front piece four and a half inches tall, this piece four and a half inches tall, and then add an inch and a half, two inches, for an envelope this size, I think I used two inches. For this one, I used an inch and three quarter. Gave us a nice little lap um, over. Then gave us plenty of plenty of room to put our hook and loop tape. Um, anyway, rather than fiddle with this, I'll do that off camera. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next time. Until then, this is Carrie from Wandering Angel Studio. Take care and have a great day.